Welcome back everyone to Mr. Hutton's science tutorial video to accompany your AQA GCSE chemistry course. Uh, it's been a while I know uh, but I'm firing out a few videos this weekend so hopefully you'll all be able to catch up with your revision and really understand your quantitative chemistry. So atom economy is our topic for the day. Uh, a few of you have been talking about some kind of theme tune for myself. Uh, any ideas you might have, you can pop them down below in the message box. Uh, I'll be wel I welcome any ideas to help me improve my videos. Uh, a theme tune, I think, might be the next thing on the cards. Okay, so before we start, let's have a look. Uh, put your phones away, go to the toilets, get yourself a drink, and a pen and paper ready to go. Right, what is atom economy? Okay, previously we've been looking at percentage yield. Percentage yield was a, a way of comparing the amount you actually got in a reaction compared to the theoretical maximum. And um, atom economy, atom economy is something similar. So it's an important consideration in industry to make sure that most of what you're using ends up in your products. Okay, that, that way you've got less waste and therefore you waste less money and more profit can be made. Okay, so percentage atom economy can be calculated using the equation just here. So the, the MR, the relative molecular mass or relative formula mass of our desired product divided by the relative formula mass of all of the reactants. Okay, so it's important you remember it's all of the reactants. So it's just product over all of the reactants. Many students often go wrong there and they don't actually put all of the reactants down. Uh, times 100 to give you your percentage atom economy. The best way to do this, guys, is to go through some examples, um, and so we'll see that coming up now. Right, example one. Uh, the thermal decomposition. Okay, remember, that's, that's a common question itself there. What is thermal decomposition? When we heat a substance to break it down. That is the definition you need there, guys. So thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate produces calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Calcium oxide is used in industry to make cement. Calculate the percentage atom economy for the production of calcium oxide. Now then, your first of all, your first thing to do is to work out an equation for this. So if you could work out this equation yourself, then have a go doing that now. If you can't, okay, then the, the equation will come up in just a second, but if you want to, pause the video and have a go at writing an equation for the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate. It really is an equation that you should be aware of for your GCSE chemistry. Right, hopefully some of you had a go at that equation and you've actually got it spot on, hopefully. If not, then here it is. Here's the actual equation. So calcium carbonate, CaCO3, uh, is thermally decomposed to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Right, so our desired product here, our desired product is the calcium oxide, okay? And then our reactant is our calcium carbonate. So if we look at our, our equation we're going to use, the MR of desired product, which is our calcium oxide, over the MR of the reactants, which is the calcium carbonate. So quite simply, we just put the MRs into our equation. So we've got 40 plus 16, over 40 plus 12 plus 48, which is 16 times 3, um, to give us 56 over 100 times 100, atom economy of 56%. It's as easy as that, guys. Okay, I think what we'll do is we'll look at another example just to make sure we're getting this. Right, example 2. Uh, lead can be extracted when lead dioxide is heated with hydrogen. It can also be extracted from lead dioxide using carbon instead, okay, because both of those are more reactive than the lead, okay, you'll come into that when you look at chemical changes in the reactivity series and using different um, elements to extract metals from compounds. So this one's saying which process has the best atom economy? So which process is going to use most of the reactants in our desired product essentially? So again, we're going to use the, um, the equation we've been using already. I'm going to give you, well, in fact, you can pause the video, have a go at trying to work out what these equations are, and then unpause to come and have a look. So have a go. 
Right, there's the equations. Hopefully, you, if you did have a go, you, you got somewhere near to these. Okay, it's a little bit difficult. I mean, lead's not something you use a great deal. You probably didn't know what the charge would be. But again, in the chemical, um, chemical changes topic you've got coming up later, you know, you will have to know the charges of your metals. Okay, so we've got two equations here, two processes that both produce lead. Okay, two ways of extracting the lead. And we want to find out which one has the best atom economy. So if we focus on um, process one on the left there, so we, our MR of desired product, which is lead, over the MR of all the reactants, which is our lead oxide and our hydrogen. Notice how in this one our molar ratio is really important. So the two in front of the H2, we do have to include that. When we look back at the reacting masses stuff, it was just there for our, our molar ratio. We didn't actually use it when we're calculating our MRs. But now you do use it because it, you have to keep that molar ratio. Okay, so here we have uh, lead divided by uh, lead oxide plus two lots of H2. So if we put the numbers in, okay, remember these numbers, your, your relative atomic mass is coming from the periodic table. It's the bigger number on each of those squares for our elements, okay? So if you're unsure where those numbers are coming from, that's where they're coming from. Uh, so we end up with 207 divided by 243 times 100. So process one has an atom economy of 85.2%. So now we're going to see whether process 2 on the right here has a better atom economy or not. And so again, we just put the our uh, formulae into the equation. I like to do it this way where I, I put the, the actual reactant uh, desired product over the reactants as Pb over PbO2 plus C. Because I think it just gives you a good idea and, and it makes sure that you know exactly which things you, you, you need to be adding up. Okay, right. So there we go, uh, simplified down to 207 over 251 times 100, which has an atom economy of 82.5%. So they're not that different, all right, but in terms of what have we got there? We've got roughly a 3.3% percent, uh, difference in industry. You know, that over the course of a year and the course of a financial year, that could be a vast sum of money. Okay, so this is really, really important for companies to consider before they go and use a particular process. All right, I think we've got another example coming up. Yep, example three. Right, household bleach, NaClO, okay, is made from sodium hydroxide and chlorine. Calculate the atom economy of this process. So sodium hydroxide, NaOH, chlorine, Cl2. Okay, so again, see if you can work out the, the written equation that we'll need for this reaction. Um, it's a bit more difficult this, so the products you're going to get are, are actually your, your bleach, but also sodium chloride and water. Okay, so you start with chlorine uh, reacting with sodium hydroxide to give you bleach, sodium chloride and water. So have a go, see if you can work that out. Alright, hopefully you came up with this equation here. So Cl2 plus 2NaOH reacts to give us NaClO plus NaCl plus H2O. Right, so our desired product here, the household bleach is our desired product, the NaClO, and the MR of our reactants is going to be the Cl2 plus the 2 NaOH. So we just put that straight into our equation there, then we use our relative atomic masses from the periodic table, okay, add them all up there, so it gets simplified down to 75.5 over 151 times 100, to give us 49.3%. Right, I've gone through that very, very quickly, as I did the other two. Um, I'm expecting you now, guys, you should know where these relative atomic masses are coming from. Um, you can pause the video by all means just to double check them uh, and make sure that you can you can link back to the periodic table where they've come from. But really, that should be com become second nature now. I'm not expecting you to know them all. Uh, of course not, there'll be some regular ones that you should know. Um, but by all means, do use the periodic table just to double check and, and see where we're getting these numbers from. Okay, there's some questions for you guys to do now. So, question one, the percentage atom economy for reaction is calculated using. It even gives you the equation here, guys. You don't have to remember it. Uh, there's a reaction there for you. 
and it says to calculate the percentage atom economy for making copper sulfate from copper carbonate. So what do you actually want to get? That's your desired product. You want to get the copper sulfate. There you go, that's your desired product. And then the sum of the relative formula masses of all the reactants is the other part. Okay, have a go at working this out now, guys. Um, use your periodic table, although it has got the relative formula masses there for you. Um, but just double check, use your periodic table, calculate the percentage atom economy, um, and then hopefully I'll show you the answer in just a moment. So pause the video and have a go now. Okay, right, let's have a look at the answer then, guys. Right, here we are. So we've got our copper sulfate divided by our reactants, which is the copper carbonate and sulfuric acid. And so we've plugged in the numbers from the question to give us an overall atom economy of 72%. Hopefully you got the same answer. If not, just go back and double check um, and just drop me a message or talk to your teachers if you're still unsure. Okay, question two. Again, right, we've got two methods here. So it says calculate the percentage atom economy for making zinc sulfate in method one. Okay, it's only asking us about method one. So again, same thing, it's giving you the equation there, uh, formula mass of zinc sulfate over the reactants. Uh, it's even giving you the MRs of things. So really guys, I think you're ready to go. So have a go at this one. Pause the video now and uh, have a go and then unpause in a moment. Okay, right, there we are. So zinc sulfate divided by our zinc oxide and our sulfuric acid, 161 divided by 179, 89.9%. .9%. Brilliant. Hopefully you've got a similar answer, the same answer even. Um, what you could do on this one is just go back and look at method two, and you could actually compare which one has the, the best atom economy. Okay, that could be something you could do by yourselves. Um, if you're struggling with that, then do drop me a note at the bottom and I can help you there. Um, so that comes to the end of the Atom Economy video. Uh, make sure you're tuning into your notifications, guys, uh, and look out for the next Mr. Hutton Science video.